G'day YouTube, warbles on a lot here. Time for a mad scientist video. Topic for the day, horse powered electricity. Is it possible? If so, why has people not done it? If not, why not? And with a question like that, you gotta begin with what is a horse power in the first place? How is it defined? And then once you know what a horsepower is, then you can start to consider electricity and how you make that by moving things around. So in the beginning, there was a coal mine owner and his mine had water in the bottom of it. And to get the water out, he had a great big bucket tied to a rope going over a pulley and the pulley was one foot diameter and it was attached with a one inch rope to a horse and the horse was walking away from the pulley and the bucket had a capacity of 50 gallons, 10 pounds to the gallon, that's 500 pounds, and the bucket was made of wood and it weighed 50 pounds. So 550 pounds, and the horse was able to walk away at one foot per second. So the bucket of water went up the mine shaft one foot every second. So when the steam engine salesman was talking to the coal mine owner, that was what the steam engine had to replicate. It had to put enough twisting power into a shaft that if you used a one foot diameter pulley as a winch drum, it would haul up 550 pounds one foot in one second. And with a circle that's got a six inch radius, just like a one foot diameter pulley has, that means that one foot per second you get 19.09 revolutions per minute and that is what defines a horsepower worth of torque 550 foot pound seconds at 19.09 revolutions per minute okay now to make electricity you have to spin a wheel covered with magnets past some lumps of soft iron that are wrapped around with copper wire and the wheel covered with magnets has to spin pretty fast indeed Motor car alternator to reach full output has to be going 4,000 revolutions per minute. So I don't see a horse doing much with one of them. Here we see a 2,000 watt alternating current generator or an alternator and it's being driven at 3,000 revolutions per minute by a 3.5 horsepower petrol engine. So we won't be using one of them either. However, what we have here is a permanent magnet, direct drive, direct current generator made in the USA back in the 1970s with massive permanent magnets and massive iron cores to the massive copper windings, which means its direct drive does not require a step up ratio unlike an automotive alternator when being driven by a six foot diameter fine pitch wind turbine rotor blade and it only actually requires a two bladed rotor in a 10 mile an hour wind with its rotor turning at 300 revs per minute this will produce about 30 watts worth of current. 20 miles an hour of wind, 450 revs a minute, 100 watts, 30 miles per hour, 600 revs per minute, 300 watts of electricity at 12 volts, 40 miles per hour, 750 revs per minute, and that's when the spring-operated centrifugal drag brakes deploy. And though it was built in the 1970s, this is actually 1850s technology. These unmaintained wooden blades have been up for 20 years. I made them 32 years ago. That's kind of relevant because in the 1850s they mounted an Arctic expedition which involved a sailing boat carrying prefabricated wooden huts, prefabricated wooden towers, and 12 volt wind turbines. The wind turbines had uh, 10 foot diameter wooden rotors and they were used to run two kilowatt generators 
which we used to run bar radiators to heat the huts of the base camp. After various misadventures with an attempt to use a hydrogen balloon to fly over the North Pole, the base camp was abandoned and a hundred years later it was rediscovered when that part of the ice flow broke off as an early warning of global warming. The wind turbines were still on the towers. They were still turning, the bar radiators were still glowing, the generators were still producing current. The only change was that a hundred years of arctic gales and hailstones had worn away one foot off the tip, turning the 10 foot diameter rotor blades into eight foot diameter rotor blades. But the low speed permanent magnet direct current generators were all still working. And no doubt somebody's gonna say, yeah, well, we've now got much better generators. We have neodymium generators. And it's all true too. And the old one is bigger and heavier than the new, but they turn at the same speed and they make the same amount of current. 30 watts at 300 revs per minute output. So we start with a pit pony working four hour shifts. 550 pounds, one foot per second upwards. As the horse walks away, six inch radius gives you 3.142 feet around the pulley. So you get 19.09 revolutions per minute. So it's kind of fair to say that we really only need a 405 to one step up ratio before Black Beauty or whatever you want to call your horse is going to be remotely capable of making electricity with a horse power. But anyway, that's the backstory as to why a horsepower worth of twisting force or torque is expressed as being 550 foot pound seconds. Thus, at 19.09 RPM over a one foot diameter pulley with a radius of six inches. Not altogether unlike this one. Measured at the bottom of the groove. Now because I happen to know where there exists a particular machine which employs two actual horses walking in circles to produce one actual horsepower at 22 revolutions per minute, which is a 30 to 1 step up from the 0.74 revs per minute that the horses are walking at, I think we should go and have a look at that machine and consider what we then need to do to it if we wanted to try and use it to drive a shiny Chinese permanent magnet neodymium 12 volt generator. So tubularosities, let us adjourn to Land of the Beardies, History House, Museum and Research Center. Here in the old hospital at Glen Innes which is unusual as small town museums go because this is large enough to have the space for comprehensive collections like the one over here featuring plenty of horse drawn agricultural devices, as well as steam engines, groovy little information boards showing the surrounding exhibits. Now I have to show you this one because this one was restored by my father. When I was about 10 years old, he got it to the point where it would run on compressed air because he didn't have a steam boiler for it. Those things go beyond their service life and they explode. So they have steam powered machinery. Some of it quite large.
and I mean large in a kind of a monumental sense, these things are significant bits of engineering. Where even the hand operated machinery is huge. This being hand operated train for a monumental stonemason. But what we are here for is over there. So we're just going to have to look beyond the steam engine that my father restored and check out that bit of gear over there. From the swingle bar attachment over to the center of the capstan's axle is a distance of 13 feet. So, compared to the 6 inch radius of your standard steam horsepower pulley size, this thing has a 26 to 1 leverage advantage. So your 550 pounds at a 6 inch radius becomes 14,300 pounds of pull out here on the end of the lever. Attached to the axle of the capstan. And the capstan's axle is connected to a 4 foot 6 inch diameter crown wheel fitted with 76 teeth around its circumference driving a pinion wheel equipped with 14 teeth connected to a universal joint which would in use be connected to this long shaft with another universal joint and on the end of that there would be a bearing block on the ground so that shaft coming off the capstan would be parallel to the ground the bearing block would be further out which would place the universal joint about there with its bearing block making it easy for the horse to walk over the low shaft close to the ground and here we have a 78 tooth wheel driving a 14 tooth wheel giving the option of a 5 inch power take off or, strange as it turns out, a 15 inch pulley. So for my purposes we'll just have to pretend that it's got a 12 inch pulley on the end of the shaft. So the horse walks at 1 foot per second around an 81.71 foot circumference circle so you got 0.74 revolutions per minute. There are 76 tooth to 14 which is a step up ratio of 5.428 to 1. Your one horse's 26 horsepower has been reduced to 4.31 horsepower at 4 revs per minute. This step up is 5.571 to 1. So the whole thing is 30 to 1. And in theory you'd get 0.644 of a horsepower at 22 RPM. 476.6 foot pound seconds but each step up ratio is only 90% efficient as a gearbox. So what you get is 0.521 of a horsepower. And if you lose 10% to inefficiency, you get 0.5 of a horsepower exactly, and you get it at 20 RPM exactly. Turn one horsepower into half a horsepower at pretty much exactly horsepower RPM. So this is a 30 to one step up gear ratio that is 50% efficient at turning two horsepower into one horsepower at 20 rpm. So now we need to step that up by 13.63 to 1 with a pair of belt drives each one 95% efficient at 3.69 to 1. 
One horse would yield 299.55 RPM, 25.5 watts of torque. And if the generator is 85% efficient, that's 21.69 watts of electricities. Two horses, 43 watts. In an average month, my solar array produces 310.59 watts per day. Given a rainy week, when the batteries are fairly flat, the following sunny day, 574 watt hours. 13 hours and 20 minutes. Even an average day takes six hours walking horses to compete with solar. And that's why horse-powered electricity was never ever a thing. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.